Internet in Russia or Russian Internet Russian, Rossiski Internet which means Russia-related Internet and sometimes Runet using first two letters from Russian plus net is a part of the Internet which is related to Russia. As of 2015 Internet access in Russia is available to businesses and to home users in various forms, including dial-up, cable, DSL, FTTH, mobile, wireless and satellite. As of July 2016, 108,772,470 people, 76.4% of the country's total population, were internet users. In September 2011, Russia overtook Germany on the European market with the highest number of unique visitors online. In March 2013 a survey found that Russian had become the second most commonly used language on the web. Internet in Russia is also sometimes called Runet, although that term mostly refers to the Russian language Internet. Russians are strong users of social networks, of which Odnoklasniki.ru used by 75% of 25 to 35Y.O. Russians in 2009 and V Contacta are the most popular. LiveJournal has also been long popular. Topic History Topic <inaudible> Early Years Retrospectively, networking of data in the Russian language can be traced to the spread of mail and journalism in Russia, and information transfer by technical means came with the telegraph and radio besides, an 1837 sci-fi novel year 4338, by the 19th century Russian philosopher Vladimir Odevsky, contains predictions such as Friends' houses are connected by means of magnetic telegraphs that allow people who live far from each other to talk to each other. And household journals, having replaced regular correspondence with information about the host's good or bad health, family news, various thoughts and comments, small inventions, as well as invitations. Computing systems became known in the USSR by the 1950s. Starting from 1952, work was conducted in the Moscow-based Institute of Precision Mechanics and Computer Engineering headed by Sergei Lebedev on automated missile defense system which used a computer network which calculated radar data on test missiles through central machine called M40 and was interchanging information with smaller remote terminals about 100—200 km distant. The scientists used several locations in the USSR for their works, the largest was a massive test range to the west from Lake Balkash. In the meantime amateur radio users all over USSR were conducting P2P connections with their comrades worldwide using data codes. Later, a massive automated data network called Express was launched in 1972 to serve the needs of Russian railways. From the early 1980s the All-Union Scientific Research Institute for Applied Computerized Systems was working to implement data connections over the BI.25 telephone protocol. A test Soviet connection to Austria in 1982 existed, in 1982 and 1983 there were a series of «World Computer Conferences» at VNIIPAS initiated by the UN where the USSR was represented by a team of scientists from many Soviet republics headed by biochemist Anatoly Klyasev. 
The other participating countries were the UK, USA, Canada, Sweden, FRG, GDR, Italy, Finland, Philippines, Guatemala, Japan, Thailand, Luxembourg, Denmark, Brazil and New Zealand. Also, in 1983 the San Francisco Moscow Teleport SFMT was started by VNI IPAS and an American team which included Joel Schatz, Michael Kleeman and Chet Watson with initial financial support from Henry Dakin. SFMT provided email service using the PeaceNet platform and multi-language support. It also undertook several slow-scan video links between the two countries, including supporting physicians such as UCLA's Bob Gale in treating patients exposed in the Chernobyl accident. It later founded a for-profit phone and data provider Sovum Soviet American Teleport in the later 80s. Meanwhile, on April 1, 1984 a Fool's Day hoax about ''Kremlin Computer'' Kremvax was made in the English-speaking Usenet. There are reports of spontaneous Internet UUCP and Telnet connections ''from home'' through by.25 in the USSR in as early as 1988. In 1990 a Glassnet non-profit initiative by the US-based Association for Progressive Communications sponsored Internet usage in several educational projects in the USSR through Sovum. <laughs> Mass usage In 1990–1991 Relcom's network was rapidly expanding, it joined UNET and was used to spread news about the Soviet coup attempt of 1991 worldwide while coups through KGB were trying to suppress mass media activity on the subject. After the fall of the USSR many former Soviet state-controlled structures were inherited by the Russian Federation, vast telephone networks among them. With the transformation of the economy, market-based telecommunication industries grew quickly, various ISPs appeared. Meanwhile, the first Russian Fidonet node reportedly started in October 1990 in Novosibirsk, and the USSR was included in Fidonet's Region 50. Russian Fidonet activity did contribute to the development of Runet, as mass networking over BBSEs was for a time more popular than over the Internet in the early 90s. In March 1991, the National Science Foundation began to allow Eastern Bloc countries to connect to the global TCP IP network, the Internet proper. By the mid-1990s, computer networks where TCP, IP was replacing UUCP appeared in many branches of regular life and commerce in post-Soviet states. The Internet became a popular means of communication for anyone in the world who spoke Russian. National so-called nets of former Soviet republics began to occur e.g. Uznet, Kaznet and others. In October 2007, then Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev announced that all of schools in Russia about 59,000 were connected to the Internet, but later concerns were publicized that there were problems with a contractor to serve them. Also in December 2007, as a follow-up to the noted Ponosovs case, which dealt with the use of illegal software in Russian schools, plans were announced to officially test Linux in the schools of Perm Krai, Tatarstan and Tomsk Oblast to determine the feasibility of further implementing Linux-based education in the country's other regions. In subsequent years test results were considered successful, but new organizational problems appeared, including obscurities with distribution of funds assigned by state. According to statistics of the European Council, in the second half of 2012 the number of new subscribers connected by technology FTTX fiber to building in Russia increased by 2.2 million people, more than all 27 countries of the European Union combined. The total number of households with LETS FTTX connection was 7.5 million. 
This means that in 2012 over 40% of the fixed line broadband users were connected by fiber optics. Russia has achieved notable progress in achieving broadband connectivity for its citizens. Mobile broadband connectivity is close to average for advanced economies 60 active subscriptions for every 100 inhabitants, the rates of mobile phone penetration is one of the highest in the world, and Russia is a global leader in the affordability of fixed broadband, with subscriber costs meeting the affordability criteria of the UN International Telecommunication Union meeting more than 90% of Russian households. Russia's average internet connection speed of 7.4 megabits per second is also almost twice the global average of 3.8 megabits per second. However, Russia still faces challenges in the digital divide in reaching rural and remote areas. Fixed broadband penetration is highest in Moscow and lowest in the Chechen Republic. Given Russia's enormous size and diverse levels of development, the digital divide continues to persist. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Population. The prominent Public Opinion Foundation (FOM) FOM in March 2007 issued a report that found 28 million people of 18 years and older in Russia, 25%, had used the internet within the last 6 months. Monthly users 23.9, 21%, daily 10.1, 9%. In November 2006 TNS Gallup Media in a report called by some sources, "...first quality Internet audience research in Russia," put a monthly Russian audience at more than 15 million. The RUKV.RU monitoring project found 1,001,806 www addresses within, RU and, SU responding in March 2008. The National Domain Registration Service RU Center announced creation of millionth RU domain on September 17, 2007. About 200,000 of domains are thought to be parked by squatters. On April 3, 2008, the RIF 2008 was opened by President-elect of Russia Dmitry Medvedev, who said in the opening address to the forum that he estimates RUNET to be populated by 40 million users, or 28% of the population. He also stated that Russian sites do $3 billion in annual transactions and have $370 million in advertising revenue. In October 2008, President Medvedev started his own video blog, which in April 2009 was expanded with the separately moderated version in LiveJournal. In June 2009, FOM issued results of its new survey that found the half year audience of people 18 years old and over was 33%, or 37.5 million. CIA World Factbook states there were 10.382 million Internet hosts in 2008 and 40.853 million Internet users in 2010 in Russia. By March 2011, the total number of broadband subscribers reached 16.5 million with penetration at almost 30%. These numbers increased within two years by 180% against 9 million in 2009. The highest penetration rate above 70% is in Moscow and St. Petersburg. These two cities also makes up a quarter of all subscribers, 3.2 and 1.2 million respectively. In September 2011, Russia overtook Germany as the European market with the highest number of unique visitors online. In March 2013, it was announced that Russian is now the second most used language on the web. According to Daily Telecom estimates, by the third quarter of 2013 there were 26.3 million broadband subscribers. 
largest residential Internet service providers by market share at the end of 2013 were, Rostelecom, 38.6%, Ur Telecom, 11.1%, Vimplecom, 10.1%, MTS, 9.4%, Transtelecom, 4.6%, Akado, 3.3%, others, 22.9%. Topic. Usage for propaganda Since 2013, the state has employed Internet users in order to spread propaganda and disinformation advocating activities of the Russian government and discrediting opposition and Western countries. The major organization employing them, Internet Isoldovania. Russian, Internet Isoldovania initially had an office in Olgino, St. Petersburg, and subsequently moved to a bigger office to Savushkina Street, also in St. Petersburg. The employees have to be present in the office for 12 hours per day every second day. They are involved in various activities including creating a visibility of mass support of the government in social media both in Russian and in English, propagating texts between different media, and collectively attacking users with anti-government views, often using multiple identities. The salary is fixed and is only paid if an employee has written a fixed number of comments per day not shorter than a fixed number of letters. The comments must contain key words, a fixed set for every day. Collectively, they are known as Kremlin trolls or trolls from Olgino. The same organization also hosts a number of websites, including the Kharkiv News Agency, which claim to be news agencies operating from eastern Ukraine or from the Donbass area and providing local news, but in fact have no staff outside the St. Petersburg office building. Topic. Backbone. The development of Internet infrastructure in Russia began with development of analog modem-based computer networks in Soviet cities, primarily in scientific institutions. The first one to connect Unix email hosts countrywide including Soviet republics was the RELCOM organization which formed on August 1, 1990 at the Kurchatov Nuclear Physics Institute in Moscow. They were functioning together with partner programming cooperative demos, named after the Soviet-made demos Unix-like operating system. In August 1990 they established regular email routing with an Internet node in Helsinki University over a paid voice line. Back in the 1990s, Rostelecom built international fiber-optic cable systems. Zapadny. Denmark Russia. Yuzhny, Italy, Turkey, Ukraine, Russia, and Vostochny, Russia, Japan, Korea, as well as Moscow Khabarovsk, Trans Russian Fiber Optic Line. The situation favored Russia's entry to the international telecommunication transit market. However, low transmission capacity 560 megabits per second of all the three systems designed mainly for voice communication became the principal obstacle that hindered international expansion. In 2005 the chelyabinsk khabarovsk fiber optic communication line was laid down which extends for 10,000 km. The minimum transmission rate is 120 gigabits per second. Plenty of local commercial ISPs function in large cities, but most of the existing country-wide cable lines are held by small number of large operators such as former monopolist, the state-controlled Rostelecom and the railways affiliated Transtelecom, which operates country biggest DWDM fiber backbone. Cell phone coverage with the digital services such as GPRS is almost ubiquitous. In year 2007 the Golden Telecom Company has constructed a massive Wi-Fi network in Moscow for commercial use which is recognized as the largest urban wireless network in the world. 
The Black Sea coast of Russia has become an important area for the fiber optic networks, as it served as a backbone of communication during the Winter Olympic Games in 2014. On October 2010 mobile operator Megaphone has selected Huawei NE5000E routers to construct backbone nodes for a 40 to gigabit per second IP, MPLS network in Russia s largest cities, including Moscow and St. Petersburg, Huawei says. Meanwhile, Megaphone also announced the opening of what it touts as Russia's largest data center in Samara. In 2011, Rostelecom started implementation of WDM based equipment on the backbone network for data transmission in the Republic of Dagestan. Due to WDM introduction the fiber optic communication line's bandwidth increased to 2.5 gigabits per second. Rostelecom invested about 48 million rubles in the project. Until 2011, the backbone network in Russia was based on DWDM technology with a capacity of 10 and 40 gigabits per second. The operator started projects to expand the capacity of the Transit Europe Asia Transit line at two independent branches. Communication lines are under construction within a second phase of the T-Backbone high-speed backbone transit Europe Asia. The construction of the first branch completed in 2011, Khabarovsk, Stockholm. The second branch, Khabarovsk, Frankfurt, was completed in 2013. In addition, the expanded backbones are in the route of Khabarovsk, Nakhodka, Tokyo and Khabarovsk, Hong Kong, where equipment of 100 GWDM is also applied. Presently, Mastertel, based in Moscow and St. Petersburg, is an ISP that provides high-speed fiber optic lines of up to 10 gigabits per second per second to consumers and businesses. In 2012, the Russian Federation announced an ambitious target of providing 90% of households with «ultrafast» connection speeds of at least 100 megabits per second by 2018. The responsibility has been given to Rostelcom, which is tasked with connecting about 4 million rural settlements by installing 200,000 km of fiber-optic cable. See also Telecommunications in Russia Internet censorship in Russia Yarovaya law List of countries by number of Internet users List of sovereign states in Europe by number of Internet users Freedom of the press in the Russian Federation Hashtag Internet Internet exchange points in Russia Russian Wikipedia List of Russian IT developers <laughs>